here again with Leticia and we wanted to bring her on here because she has done such an exceptional job within the well, job within the hidden job market. So she went from having zero LinkedIn contacts, feeling like she doesn't know anyone, but she knows she has really, really great skills and a great mission to growing her network exponentially and getting all kinds of really, really exciting job leads. So I will pass it over to you already, Leticia. Um, I'll ask you a couple more questions as we go along, but why don't you start off by introducing yourself? So where are you from and what is your sector? So my name is Leticia. Uh, I'm Brazilian from Rio de Janeiro. And uh, my industry, I like to work with food security, with rural population, um, developing agriculture, um, giving them nutrition education sections, and uh, helping them to understand more on how to have a health food system, what to eat, what to plant, uh, how, to, how to create a health food system for this rural population who suffer from uh, malnutrition, uh, problems with vitamins and this kind of stuff. Excellent, excellent. Okay, so I know that lately you've been on fire, you've been making all these great contacts, but think back a couple of weeks prior to yes. finish your last contract. And I know it was a stressful time with you, right? Not knowing what was next, feeling like you might even have to go and get a new degree. Can you tell us a little bit about what was that situation and how were you feeling? Um, I finished my master a uh, couple of months ago, three months ago, and uh, I went to Mozambique to finish uh, a job I started in my master was an internship and they called me again to to finish this project develop a little bit more and when it, it finished uh, I was a little bit lost because I didn't know how to go further I was like lost in a in this sending sending resume to jobs and not being answered and thinking oh my god uh, I really good to work, so should I have more degrees? Maybe I should do a doctorate or other post-graduation. What should I do here? And this was when I met Dalia and she, and I saw her job. And um, it was this, I, I, I didn't want to do another degree, keeping this, this academy thing, I, I wish I could work, but I didn't know exactly how to make these contacts. And that was it. <laughs> yeah, so it sounds like you did your master's and then you were hoping after that you were feeling, uh, just that feeling of, okay, I do all these studies, now I'm ready to be in the job market, yes. get experience. And so you got sort of lucky, you got that opportunity to go to Mozambique and you loved that opportunity, but then once it came to an end, you're back to square one and it didn't necessarily lead to something else, right? Yes. And that kind of thing can happen, like especially when you're in that scarcity job hunter mode and it's just like oh well let's see what i can get hopefully someone will take me either because you're going into a new sector or because you feel like it's a competitive place there aren't that many jobs out there and then it's easy to get stuck um being like well, what do i do now do i get another degree which there's yes. nothing wrong with degrees but if that's not your goal if your goal is really that you want to work that's where a lot of people end up getting more degrees and then still not getting a job because you know, that doesn't really help you build the contact base that you need. It makes you well, it's still in the academy, still in this process of degrees, 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 and not really going to the, the real, job market. Yeah, I don't yes. want to see the world putting academia down or anything like that, but it's, it's a different, yes. yeah, it's a different, it's a different area. So, so yeah, nothing wrong with degrees if that's what you <laughs> do, but if you're doing it yes. to get the job, it's very rarely the right, yeah, the, the most efficient approach to getting yes. that. Okay, so then I know we started working together and you sort of saw my method with the hidden job market. And I remember you kind of, I, I, I seem to remember you going, okay, this is nice, but this isn't going to work for me because I have zero contacts. On <laughs> yes. So, um, my contacts were, my contacts were like my ex-bosses, my two ex-bosses, but they are 
some people in Mozambique are not very connected to this LinkedIn thing. Yeah. So, but even them, I, I had on LinkedIn. So I had no, almost no contacts in this industry on my network. Mm -hmm. So, but what I thought was great is that even though you were a bit skeptical, you were kind of like, oh, I, don't know, I don't know if it's really going to work for me, you still did everything. I mean, I mean, you went yes. full in to the point that the other week we had a call together and you were saying, I don't know if it's working. I only have, you know, like five different people talking to me or something crazy, you know, quite a few people. And you were going, should I have more people than that or what? And I went, no, this is great. This is amazing. So yes. you really, really did did all the steps regardless and went through it. Um, what was, what was, what were some of the contacts you were most excited about? Um, I made contacts with some country directors from organizations, for international organizations that uh, are developing projects with rural, rural development and with food and nutrition also. Uh, so organizations like World Vision, Care International, Game, um, UN Women, from also from some local consultancy mm -hmm. uh, companies. Uh, let me see. Also from FAO. Yeah. You have an amazing, amazing network now. And then yes. the point I think that's interesting to touch on is that after your last contract, you sort of, you had your heart set on going back to Mozambique, right? Yes. And, um, and then it was that whole thing, well, how do you, how do you go there? How do you get uh, work there? And a yes. lot of people think that they should, um, a lot of people, when they don't know how to get a job in another place, they say, well, maybe I just have to go there and figure it out, right? And so- yes. You decided to do that because your heart was so set on going back there, but you actually set up your entire network even before you're going to be hitting the ground. Yes. So uh, can you tell us a little bit about that? Yes. Like how grateful are you that you didn't just go there without doing this work in advance? Um, before leaving Mozambique this next time, I was thinking maybe there should stay there and try to make contacts but I was a little bit secure. Maybe I will spend all my money in this, in this process and not find anything. So I started to do these connections to talk to these people and some of them said, uh, maybe it's better if you were here, it's easy if you were here. So mm -hmm. I did, I keep doing more contacts, uh, investing my time on this, making these connections, talk to these people. Mm -hmm. uh, they were also helping me, giving me a little, some tips, introducing each other people also in this industry. And they said, ah, in January, we are going to start to do some, to look for new people for our projects. We are starting new projects in the beginning of the year. So it would maybe nice to have you already here. And I decided to go to Mozambique in January mm -hmm. when they are going to start this, uh, this process. And, uh, and having all these contacts is easier because now I'm going there in the, a little bit in the dark yet, but with a lot of connections that um, I feel that this is going to happen. They, they are, I'm really going to find a job mm -hmm. through all this work, but um, yeah, um, that's it. Yeah. So You know what is great that you took advantage of is that because you've made these connections in advance and you've, you, you've used your online presence, They've gotten to know you in, in advance and they've gotten to know you as a professional because yes. you've networked with them, they see your entire uh, CV. You know when you meet people just like that in person, you might make a good connection, but they have no idea what you've done in the past. And this happens yes. a lot, even with your own colleagues or maybe your own boss. Your boss might, depending on how it was that you were hired and depending on their memory of if they really looked at your CV and how much they remember from it, they might completely forget about what else you've done in the past and they just see you as doing the thing that you do right now. So yes. it's, the ideal is what is when you do what, you, what you've done, which is do the online branding part, showcase yourself as the professional that you want to be in that new sector, and then go meet them in person. And obviously, if, you know, like in your case, you were flexible enough that you can go and go to the ground, you can, you can go there and you can 
you know, meet people in person. Some people that's not possible because they have a whole life that they can't just give up unless they already have a job. And so for those people, they can do that in advance and they can move only when they get their position. But if you're more flexible and you have your heart set on just going there and making it happen, well, you know, don't disregard all of this advanced work and all yes. of this branding work. So you're not just getting there and hanging out and, you know, there are lots of people in the place that you're going, Mozambique or yes. wherever you're going, that are also competing for these jobs. So it's not just being there in person that's going to guarantee. Yes, of course. And this was very nice because um, I showed them my past work. And as now as I started this video, okay, so I'm going in January. Let's see what kind of job. And also, some there's also, okay, so maybe we can write a project together right now. Because now I'm going, I think it's easier to have this contact. Of course, I have all these background of talking to these people, making a lot of contacts, and also knowing other jobs that are working. So now I can now other projects that are, have been amazing in Mozambique, all these organizations, what they are doing. Yeah. So it's also easier to build a project before a new organization or try this, this new thing. Yeah, so they're actually it's very good. Sorry, <laughs> they're actually <laughs> of creating a project together, right? So if the business yes. doesn't exist yet, oh wow, now that you are here and we see what you have to offer, let's mm -hmm. create a project together. Yes, a project together. Mm -hmm. And it, it comes back to when you're in the hidden job market, how you can often create a, posi a position which didn't actually exist anywhere on those job boards. Yes. So I'm really, really happy. That's something that you're, you're starting to <laughs> And I think the, the other thing I'd like to hear from you is how are you feeling now just in terms of a person? Because you are really coming across completely differently than a few weeks ago. Like it's feeling like you have so much more confidence and um, you're seeing yourself as more of, I don't want to say a professional because you were a professional before, yes. but just more as, hey, I'm valuable and you need me just as much as I need you kind of thing, as opposed to, do you have any positions? <laughs> yes, this, this for me was, the best part of the of the program because sometimes ah, I, I don't have a lot of, of experience I'm just get out of my master how can I go to this competitive uh, industry and was really good that very good so like I spoke not that I discovered but I found a lot of things that I know I could do but I didn't think this thing was valuable I didn't think that all my work had a value and when I talking to these people uh, when, of course, Dalia's helping me a lot with her program to see, oh my God, I can really work on this. I have the skills. I don't need more degrees. I know how to do it. Mm -hmm. So for me, this confident part was very nice. And also when I was talking to these leader industries and talking about my experience, they said, oh my God, this is so great that you did it. I'm really looking for someone who works with, the, with that. And I was, oh my God. So... I really can do this. So I really have a value. So for me, this was a totally new thing. Yeah, actually hearing confidence. one thing people talk about confidence, like, oh, let me just feel more confident and all this kind of thing. But that's, that's a part of it. And also, but then the other part of it is explaining what it is that you do in a way that now they get it and now they see your value. And then the other full effect of that circle is when you hear the those people who work for places that you really admire, that you'd love to work for, those country directors telling you, oh, wow, you're, you have so much experience and wow, you've done such interesting things and we should really work together. Then it's like, oh, yes. wow, it's not just me trying to make myself feel confident, but these people I admire, these country directors are actually telling me that yes. then you know for sure. Yes. And, um... I don't know, I, I was like, oh, okay, I work with rural population, I work with agriculture, but um, I hear some things like, ah, a lot of people don't like to do this job. A lot of people don't um, li like to work more in the office and not in the field. So some, some things that we think that is common and everybody do this and everybody's doing this. So mm -hmm. for me, it was very, this for me was the best part to see that I really have a, some things that are different, some things that, um, there's some things that I can really, how can I say this in, in English, to give to the company. 
that yeah, they're needing. Something that actually they don't have, that they lack, that you have, right? That's something yes. that you need. And I think that happens a lot where sometimes the things you think are valuable about yourself and the things that you keep saying, I can do this, I can do that. And people are writing this on their CV or saying this in their interviews. Yes. And actually sometimes employers don't care about those things at all versus you might have something else that you think is no big deal. And that might be yes. the thing employers want and you haven't talked about it because you thought it was nothing, right? Yes. Excellent. Well, I'm so <laughs> excited for you. I'm so excited to see what's going to happen in January now that you have this whole list of contacts that are waiting for you to get there. Um, what would be your advice to someone who is in the position that you were in before? Um, some advice. Um, for me, the, the, don't be afraid to talk to these people, to these, um, these big people in the industry. In the beginning, I was thinking, oh, why a country director would talk to me? I'm just a master's student. But um, people were very open to me, open to help, open to introduce me to people, to know about me, to know about my work. So my advice would be not to be afraid to try. Because we already have the know. We are with the know. So don't be afraid. Try. See what's going on. Um, for me, this was the, the best. I think the best advice is just try. Because everybody has a value. Everybody has your importance. And if we have um, this feeling to go to, we want to work to this, we should try. You have to, try. yeah. Yes, we have to try, we have to show ourselves. And this for me was very good. This also helped me with my confidence, seeing all these people want to talk to me. So, oh, okay, let's talk in Skype, let's talk, or I'm busy, let's talk in WhatsApp. All these things make me feel confidence also. They gave me confidence also. So this was of very course. nice. And then you're part of a community, you're part of a discussion. You know, that's what the hidden job market is. It's yes. a big mysterious, well, it's kind of mysterious when you're on the outside of it. But it's can, once you're inside of it in the right way, it's a very friendly place and a very uplifting place because people actually want to help you to get the thing that you want. And it's like, oh, all these people, all these advocates here to help me out, right? And it's no longer you against the job market, against the world. You're, you're in it. And one thing that I, that, I, that I saw is that they are not better than us. They have more experience. They work with a lot of this and they want to share this knowledge to our people and help us to develop also. Mm -hmm. So it's good to see that ah, you're in the beginning of this. So let's start with this and maybe you can develop to that, to that mm -hmm. area. So this was very nice, very nice to see. That's amazing. <laughs> And, and then like you were saying before, it's just the fear and all of the doubt of what if it doesn't work, maybe I should just go back to school or maybe I should just stay where I am or whatever that completely sabotages the whole thing. Yes, yes. So don't be afraid, try, talk to people. People are open to hear, to help and we need to do this. Yeah, yeah. Excellent. So is there anything else you want to add? Any other words of wisdom or things? Um... Now, um, I don't know, but um, one thing that, that also helped me a lot with your program was this knowing how to write a resume, because when you, like how to express yourself, because we mm -hmm. have all our, our knowledge, our, 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 uh, our experience, and maybe we don't know how to show it to people. Mm -hmm. And this was very good also in the program, learn how to show myself, how to say the things that I already know I do. This yeah, very yeah. nice. And I think and I think all of that prep work that you did before was also what helped you once you were getting into the hidden job market, into the talking yes. to people part. Because a lot of people are like, oh yeah, networking, I need to do that. And they start writing to people and they say the completely wrong things. Yes. And they don't get anywhere and they go, okay, networking doesn't work, right? But it's often because they're not doing it the right way. This was definitely very important. How to express myself, how to say um, the, the way to write, the way to everything. This was definitely very important because I saw people feel interesting in the way I was saying things. Yeah. So this was definitely very, very important. It changes everything. And this is a skill you are going to use for the rest of your life because definitely. you're going to need to show your value in that way in so many different places. Even once you're in that next position, you're, every time you write emails, every time you talk to people, that's something you're going to keep using over and over again. Yes, definitely.
So really excited for you. Happy to have you back. <laughs> what job you're going to end up taking yes. and then discuss, you know, what's, what's new in your life and what's happening with you. If uh, you have nothing else you want to add, then we will close it there. Okay. All for you. <laughs> yes, that's okay. Well, thank you so much for coming on here and I'm super excited for you. Yes, I'm excited too. Thank you, Dalia, for this opportunity also to share my experience. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, we'll talk soon. Bye. Bye.